A lot has changed from the days of early ocean exploration, and by fostering collaboration with different partners, scientists increase their access to new tools and the expertise needed for using them. Recently, Florida Fish and Wildlife scientists participated in a collaborative research trip with the Sanctuary Program in the Florida Keys, run by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. Scientists from FWC were invited to collaborate with the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, NOAA's research lab in Beaufort, North Carolina, and Florida Atlantic University aboard the NOAA ship Nancy Foster. This cooperation enabled the use of diverse equipment and expertise to examine what is happening in waters off the Florida Keys. The Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary is a 2,900 square nautical mile protected area. And in such a vast area, it's essential to have collaborative partnerships with our other agency, state, and academic research partners. The NOAA ship Nancy Foster is an ideal research platform to conduct such multifaceted research missions. Different people on the team bring with them unique abilities. For example, scientists like Jennifer Vanderplume and Don Field use drop cameras to verify the bottom habitat that the ship's crew surveys using sonar. This camera is able to go deeper than the divers and can transmit back to the ship real-time footage. Another tool that scientists deployed on this expedition was the stereo camera. This cage has cameras on all four sides, giving the scientists a view of what is going on around the area. There are even low-light cameras that can be deployed through the night. Deploying equipment like stereo cameras, for example, um, you can deploy them at 200, 300 feet if you want and keep them there not only during the day but overnight as well so you get a continuous uh, video instead of just the the snapshot that divers tend to get. The exciting thing we found on the stair cameras was actually when we deployed the stair camera at around 210 feet uh, on a suspected Kubera snapper aggregation site. Being able to document aggregations such as these can help the public and managers make better decisions about these resources. Dr. Laurent Cherubin and William Lang from Florida Atlantic University were also aboard the Nancy Foster and piloted a wave glider to collect oceanographic information and record fish sounds. The wave glider has a platform that is on the surface and is transmitting this information back to the ship via satellites in real time. Underneath the waves, a tether attaches the glider to both the fins that help it move and the instruments that gather data. Fish sounds collected by the wave glider can be used to identify aggregations of fish. I think it's a tool that is becoming more and more affordable to use and um, creating this kind of partnership with people who have those units would really benefit the research we do in that area. At the same time the wave glider and stereo cameras are collecting data, divers are able to get in the water and place acoustic tags in fish of interest. These acoustic tags can last for several years and will allow the fish to be recorded on specially placed underwater receivers. Scientists will retrieve these receivers to download the information and see when the fish swim by. Uh, the advantage of tagging underwater versus topside on a boat, uh, the main advantage is probably reducing or, or eliminating barotrauma. Uh, swim bladder expansion sometimes becomes fatal for a fish. Fish traps placed on the bottom catch groupers and snappers. Divers place acoustic transmitters inside appropriate fish and release those that are not tagged. Fish implanted with acoustic tags are stitched up using dissolvable stitches and once measurements are taken, the fish is released. It can help you learn uh, where fish travel to to spawn, uh, where they spend most of their time, where they forage. The information that we get from these monitoring and targeted research studies is essential to providing information to help us better manage the resources of the sanctuary. As the tools and technologies used to study the reef environment advance, collaboration between scientists becomes more important. Having all this uh, holistic approach of combining all this technology give us not only an enhancing capacity, but at the same time will enhance goals for the future of how we see if we can manage these resources. Teamwork on missions like these are providing the best possible information for future management of these resources.